Hey guys, thanks for joining me here on another episode of Common Waters. Uh, today I'm going to do a swordfish bait rigging video for you guys. Uh, this is how to rig a strip bait. For example, here I've got some Dorado bellies uh, off some fish that I caught just the other day. So these are fresh strip baits. I'm going to show you guys how to trim them up and then how to stitch a bait on there. Um, I've got my skirts ready. I've got my rigging box, which I always have in my bag with me. A um, <clears throat> couple different varieties of hooks. This is a 7691. This is an 110 Jobu. I'm trying to kind of match the bait. I think this one I'm actually probably going to end up. Uh, cut a little bit of that off. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I'm still kind of undecided. Um, this here is uh, about five and a half, six feet. Uh, this is a 400 pound Iserline. Uh, monofilament leader I crimped up. We've got a sample ball bearing swivel here on the end of it. Uh, single aluminum sleeve and then some chafing spring. Um, this here I've also just slid on a single sleeve. I'll use this to stop the squid skirt itself. Um, and then from there I need to just go ahead and pick out what color skirt I want. Uh, I do have this black and kind of orange. Uh, has some glow. I rigged one bait with the glow already. I think this one will. I think this one will do an orange skirt. Uh, this is a pretty big skirt. Ready? I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one. Wow, these are quite large. That's okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead. And we're gonna thread our skirt on here. Remember, going from top to bottom because that's obviously how our bait's gonna lay. Let's figure out what hook we want. We're gonna take our bait here. Now lay our bait down, make sure everything is nice and symmetrical. That is the key. The key to this whole thing, guys, is making sure that your bait is symmetrical. So when it's down there at a thousand feet, your bait is swimming like this and not spinning. So good here. Let me take a little bit off here. Go with the mustad. It's gonna put us about here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off where his pet fins were. It's a little tough and bony right here. And I just I think it's gonna be a little bit of an issue trying to stitch it. Yeah, that's a lot softer. Be able to stitch the eye of the hook here a lot better, I think. But I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go with the owner. Um yeah, I think we're going to do the Jobu. I just have a little more confidence in that hook. Um, I do have some bone here I want to get rid of. Ah, there we go. Get the bones out of there. So we are fairly symmetrical here. I'm not too worried about back here. Might need to go ahead and take... A little bit more from there. I'm go ahead and cut this at a little bit of a sharper angle. This is what's going to be up inside of our squid skirt. So definitely want this to lay and be symmetrical. So yeah, that'll sit like that. We're essentially going to be looking at that there, guys. So I think that's great. So let's go ahead and take wipe my hands. Let's go ahead and take our skirt. Take ourselves an aluminum sleeve here. Go through there. Go ahead and slide our Jobu on. Go ahead and leave yourself a quarter inch or so out. Um, and I want, like I said, I want to make sure not to leave this. I don't want this super tight because then the hook's not going to move. But this way, let's have some movement. Crimping. We're going to go ahead. And we're going to make sure not to crimp the ends of our sleeve. One motion. Done. We're going to move that up. Right next to it, one motion, done. We're gonna come out one more, not to the ends. I'll be done. As you guys can see there, there's 403. We're flared out on the ends. Uh, when you crimp the ends of them, a lot of people wanna push down on there. These are just basically friction. Um, they're pushing the line, smashing the line together. If you go ahead and put your crimpers on the ends of the sleeve and you push down here, you have these sharp edges, you're gonna be cutting your leader which is not something that we want to do. Um, these fish will take advantage of every single weak point possible. So this here is some wax thread, 70 pound wax thread. 
go ahead and pull that off there. So here's a rigging needle, a closed eye rigging needle. I prefer the closed eye. Uh, the open eyes to me are just too hard to work with. You can find the open eye needles relatively cheap, I believe. Um, but again, they're just, they're way too hard for me to work with personally. So I buy the closed eye needles and they seem to not tear the baits up as much. So we'll go through there, tie a little overhand knot, make sure this is even. Again, this is 70 pound wax thread. Um, it's really cool stuff. It's the same thing we use for our uh, loops on our buoy wind-ons and things like that. And also for your weight. So we're gonna go ahead and take this bait, figure out exactly where it's gonna sit. Want it here, bend of the hank is gonna come out of here. Let's go ahead and poke that right in the middle. I think I want that up a little bit higher. I think I'm gonna take that and re-poke it, guys. We'll go down just a little bit farther. And that's what's really nice about this. You don't like it, guys? Redo it. Make sure you are happy. There we go. I just want to. I want to get up to where I can cover the eye. My bait's going to be flat and flush. I think I was a little low before. So what we'll do? Go ahead and straighten our leader. We're go ahead and go through once. I'm going to open this loop up. I'm going to go ahead and pull this. I don't want to smash it to where I'm smashing the meat out, but definitely want to lock it down tight. Um, let's go ahead and turn the leader over here. I'm going to go, that one was over the hook. I'm going to go under under the hook. Like. All right, so now I'm gonna go back over the top and I'm gonna go through the eye of the hook. This here is gonna secure this bait to the eye of this, of this Jobu. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna go through there, make sure that this hook is locked down to this bait. Around that way come up this way and then we're going to go back the other way. So we've gone up and over and through the eye from each direction and this thing is locked. So we'll go ahead and go there. Now we're going to go ahead and do a few more stitches across this way just to tighten it up. Fish can't see any of this. But again, the most important thing, guys, is that your bait is rigged straight, straight. Look at that. That is what we want, guys. We don't want any curves. We don't want this bait sliding around. This bait needs to be rigged straight. So you can always go through a couple of times. You need to go through the eye two, three, four times, whatever it is. The most important thing when you're doing this, guys, is do not, do not, do not, do not hit your leader. If you nick your leader, guys, all that work that you spent in getting your gear ready, rigging up your baits, everything you've done could go right out the window when that big sword takes advantage of the fact that you were trying to rush and you took your bait rigging needle jammed it into your loop on your hook on your leader right there. When you get bit, you feel that fish, as soon as you start pushing your drag forward, pink, your line breaks. And it's all over because you were in a hurry, didn't want to take your time, weren't being super careful, and you just blew up your bait leader because you nicked the line. So what we're gonna do is I've got this tag in here Go ahead and go under this real quick. Now we're gonna lock this off. Okay, so we're gonna lock this off. We'll go ahead and cut that. 
hide that. We'll go ahead and take the tag end from the original loop when we started. Just do a double overhand. Cut both of those off. Boom. All right. Now I've got a, a straight bait. Ugh. Big belly, but nice and straight. So now what we need to do is we need to stitch up this back end here. So we are going to take our needle, get rid of that piece. What pants? We're going to pull out a lot more. Almost double what we did before. Okay. I recommend if you're doing this, guys, I'm really lucky. I, uh, I built myself this fillet slash rigging table um, out of a four foot fold out. Um, which works great. I got a piece of uh, eighth inch, I believe. Yeah, eighth inch King Starboard, and uh, some plywood, some half inch ply. I put some half inch ply on top, and then I skinned it with the starboard. Built a little frame, and I lacquered the whole thing just with some polyurethane um, to keep it waterproof. And uh, this is my fillet table, so I can put it out in my front yard, fillet my fish. I have a little cutout right here with a basket that's full of holes so it catches all my little small pieces of stuff. Uh, but I can, you know, run my water, wash everything off. Um, get yourself a little bait rigging table and a, a bowl of water really helps because your hands are going to get real sticky and mushy, especially if you are rigging uh, bellies. You get all the real fine scales. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the very top. We're going to pull this all the way through. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to go right through our loop and move this out of the way. We're going to go right through our loop. I'm not going to pull super hard because we're going to end up stitching. Oh, see? I didn't really get the skin. I pulled too hard. That's a great example. I didn't get down and get enough meat. Perfect example right there. My bellies are getting a little bit warm. Um, they're just not ice, ice cold anymore. So I'm going to hurry this up a little bit. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go about an eighth of an inch down from the edge of the cut. And we're gonna spiral all the way down. And so we don't need to pull super hard, but we do wanna pull hard enough to where it's, it's holding everything together or it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, keep this as even as possible. Don't, pit, don't poke yourself with your rigging needle, be very careful. But make sure that the edges are lined up here as you're going around and you're getting in the same area. So if I'm on this side poking down an eighth of an inch, I wanna make sure I'm coming out on this side an eighth of an inch. Because when you pull tight, if you don't, you're gonna get the little ends that are gonna flare out, they're gonna cause your bait to spin and all your hard work goes right down the drain. So, you start practicing in this stuff, guys, you should be able to rig a bait five or ten minutes uh, relatively quickly. Um, belly baits seem to be a little more durable than the squid. I think they're a little more forgiving uh, as far as rigging as well. Squid um, are a little bit softer all the way around. You know, they don't have a lot of structural integrity, so they tend to want to pull and flop and move and have to do a lot of more trimming of the mantle and stuff like that. Um, I know there's some guys some companies out there like Deep Purple. They are a uh, so SoCal company um, that's been getting into the swordfish game. Um, he does pre-rig deep drop baits. He rigs all of his stuff on circle hooks, I believe. And they uh, use zip ties. Up in the mail, I think there's three or four zip ties, but everything's really straight. They seem to work out really well. Um, I haven't experimented a whole lot with that yet. Um, but it seems like a great method if you're on the water and you want to have like fresh baits, not changing your leaders if you get bit and you need to throw a new one on. You know, being able to grab a squid, slide it on, three or four zip ties through the mantle and however he's doing it, and then be able to drop a bait in, seems like a lot faster than having to, you know, pull out a whole new leader, especially since we don't really like to use snap swivels with our leaders. Um, it's just one more thing to get caught on, your leader to tangle up with. So. It definitely is going to take a little more time if you're, you know, cutting crimps and starting over. Um, I'm getting all the way to the back here, just about to the very end. We'll go ahead and leave this open. That's perfect. Then what I'm going to do here is pull this kind of tight. 
and then I'm going to go back the other direction, guys. And what we're going to do is we're going to go kind of like every other, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to end up making an X pattern. We're going to cross. We're gonna go in between every hole we just poked on each side. So we're gonna go in between here and come out in between this set right here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna create this cross hatch pattern. It's gonna keep the belly closed. It's gonna keep it stitch closed. It's also gonna make it extremely durable. It's not gonna open up. Swordfish can sit there and smack it and beat it up with his bill all that he wants. And he's not going to be able to one either knock the bait off the hook or two demolish it to the point where there's really nothing left that he wants to eat and he goes looking for a meal somewhere else so like i said once you do this a bunch of times guys you can rig a bait pretty quick pull tight don't pull super super tight like i said you pull too hard you're going to rip the wax thread right through the bellies um, and you're gonna end up ripping it right through and you gotta kind of try and stitch it back together in a weird way and try and save it It's not something we're interested in doing. We want to take our time You're investing a lot of time energy uh, Not to mention money Trying to catch a swordfish so spending an extra five or ten minutes to rig your baits I think is a a very valid thing to do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do one last stitch here. I'm gonna run my needle through here, the double half hitch. I'm gonna lock it down. Not super tight. I'm gonna lock that down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my thread off. I'm gonna use the two ends from the original loop when I started, and then these are the two ends that I just cut off. I go ahead and do a double overhand once, pull it kind of tight, and I'm going to do one more single. Boom. All right, guys, there is a rigged belly. That bait is nice and straight as you can see. About as straight as I think we're going to get. And you'll see this cross hatch back here. This is what I'm talking about. This cross hatch pattern, we're going over and over, under, over, under. Come over to here, we're going to take our skirt. This is really mainly to just make your bait more streamlined when it's going down. Um, and it's also, there we go. It's also going to help your, uh, you know, it helps attract them. I think it definitely makes your bait a little bit bigger. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's going to help protect your bait a little bit as well. Uh, but there we go. There's a rigged bait. Uh, we're gonna pull this guy down right to the top of our hook. I'm gonna cut this skirt. I don't like how long this skirt is. Everybody has their preference. I just don't want them that long. I like my skirts to be roughly like half of the length of my bait. You know, give or take. I don't want it covering the whole bait. To me, this is more just helping this bait get down um, and play a little more streamlined. Um, you know, so we'll go ahead and get this skirt on there. We want it. Make sure it's centered up. That's good. Go ahead and lay that bait down, lay that guy down. We'll go ahead and take our sleeve. We'll take our sleeve and slide it right down to there. The whole point of this sleeve, guys, is it doesn't need to be crimped on to death. You don't want to crimp it hard because you don't want to damage your leader at all. All that this crimp is here to do. Once a little bit better grip. It's just on there. It's just gonna keep the skirt from wanting to slide up your leader. So there's another belly bait, guys. There's another strip. We'll get this down. I'm gonna go ahead and get this leader here wrapped up. We'll get this thrown into a vac seal bag. I'll vacuum seal this, keep them fresh. It's definitely a little more work, um, but again, we want to keep our baits fresh, put them in a vac seal bag. If you guys have any other questions, please reach out to me. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this video. 
whether it's something related to bait rigging or not. Um, I'm going to clean my mess up here, get my board washed off, and then I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff ready for tomorrow. Plan on going and doing some drops tomorrow. There's been a few fish caught locally. Um, I think it's kind of starting to turn on a little bit. So go ahead and get the, the rods ready for tomorrow. I just got a brand new Makaira 50 that I ordered. Um, I loaded that full of uh, about 1100 yards, 80 pound hollow. Um, I normally fish 65 pound solid, but I'm gonna try 80 pound hollow on this. Um, we don't have quite the current the guys do on the East Coast. So I think using the hollow is gonna be okay. It's not gonna be a whole lot more drag. We're not fishing quite as deep as those guys. Um, I'm mainly gonna be fishing eight to 1100 feet, um, but it'll allow me to whip a loop in there, which is a little bit cleaner to me than tying a bimini twist. Uh, nothing wrong with the bimini. Uh, I just really prefer the seamless connection of a whip loop. Um, but I also got a new Okuma Rapid Crank, which is an awesome little tool. Let me grab it and show you guys. This is an awesome new tool from Okuma. Uh, let me grab my reel and show you guys. So this is a Makaira 52 SEA. Um, what's really awesome about this rapid crank is it's not permanently attached to your reel. So I can fight the fish without this on there. I can utilize this reel for other things if I want to. What is really, really nice about this is this is all machine, uh, 6061 aluminum. This is really nice. They did a, a phenomenal job on this. Um, 15 degrees of pivot, if you guys can see that, for your drill. Um, it's specifically labeled rapid crank for the 50 to the 80 wide. Um, so you don't accidentally try and use this on a different reel. One of the key things as well is you always want to use an assisted device like this, a drill assisted device. Uh, you want to have your reel in low gear. Um, it's very important. You want that torque. You want it in low gear. You're winding up anywhere from five to 10 pounds of lead and bait. Don't want to cause unnecessary stress on your reel. Um, and what's awesome about this is the way this is machined, when it snaps on, it's going to put your reel into low gear so you don't ever forget. Um, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway, just because it's a good habit to get into. Um, so very simple device. This piece here snaps right on to the handle shaft. Um, so this goes on to here and that's it. It, it. it is ready to go. It is very secure. There is almost no play. I mean a millimeter to a play. Um, but this thing, they, like I said, they did a phenomenal job on this thing. Um, but, you know, it, it's put your impact driver, your drill here, bring a couple extra batteries, and then you're not hand cranking from 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet. And then when you want to fight a fish, if you get bit, you know, you get down to the bottom, you redrop, boom, comes right off. And what's even cooler is when it comes off, if you do it right, it's going to snap the button. It's going to hit the button right here, which is your shift knob, and put the reel back into high gear for you. So uh, phenomenal thing from Okuma. Like I said, they're like 130 bucks. Um, much better, I think, than the real cranky and the speedy crank, I think is the other one. Um, those are good, but the way they spin around, they spin around, they hit the handle shaft and it's just kind of archaic. Um, this is the way to go. So home run Okuma. Uh, I'll definitely be adding another Makaira to my arsenal and then that's all I'm gonna need um, but yeah so this is like I said a new Makaira 50 um, in matte black which is super slick uh, packed full of Seaguar 80 pound thread lock hollow um, but we're gonna get this wet tomorrow and dump her in and see if we can put one in the boat um, but yeah thanks for tuning in guys I appreciate it hopefully you guys learned something uh, please like the video subscribe to the channel uh, I hope to do more videos for you guys soon Hope you guys all have a wonderful week and thanks for tuning in.